On today's video, we're going to be looking at the top 10 worst places for blacks in Florida. Florida is part of the Deep South, and some of the analytics we're going to go over are going to confirm to you that Florida is a place where African Americans are seriously disadvantaged. We're going to see which places have the highest homicide rates for African Americans, and that is going to be the contributing factor to our list today. And that's pretty straightforward regarding what places are more dangerous for African American families. The state average homicide rate for Florida's African Americans is 21 out of 100,000. That's more than five times higher than the homicide rate for whites or Hispanics. Who the perpetrator is doesn't matter because if an African American kills an African American, one goes to prison, the other one goes to the graveyard, and that's killing two birds with one stone. For the people who created this situation that has led African Americans to be in these conditions, that's actually worse. You're destroying two families at the same time when that happens. Bell Glade and Florida City are some of the most dangerous places in Florida. And in both towns, I've been in events that were only for the black community, where thousands of African Americans get together. And I've been there the entire day, and I was possibly the only white person there. And nobody bothered me. So it's not like Florida is Mississippi or Alabama where it's segregated and awkward. That's definitely not the case in Florida. But when you look at the analytics, when you see the information of how many black people are being killed and how disproportionately they're suffering these situations, you know that inherently there's a problem with the system in Florida. For example, many racist white people say that the reason African Americans are going to jail more often is because they're the crime. So the police has to follow the crime. And I have had white friends who tell me that they have to end up patrolling black areas more because there's more crime. But if you look at the analytics of drug overdose deaths, you'll see that African Americans, their overdose death rate is actually 24 out of 100,000 in Florida, while it's 37 for whites in Florida, which means that the drugs are not in the African American communities, they're in the white communities. And these police officers are the ones who are deciding to profile African Americans, while the white communities are much more likely to die from overdoses. Just in the state of Florida alone, 6,600 people are dying from overdoses in the white community. Whites are 10 times more likely to die from an overdose than they are to die from a homicide. So when you compare black homicide victims to white overdose victims, there's actually a much larger problem with white population dying from overdoses. However, let's say an African American person is killed in a murder, it will be the headline on the news. But if a white person overdoses, it will never make headlines for the news. The media portrays African American murders as a horrific thing while ignoring the fact that whites are much more likely to die from overdoses, which is still a death directly related to criminal activities. Every year, over 600 whites are killed by homicides in Florida, but that number is 800 for African Americans. And still, despite the fact that African Americans are more likely to die from an overdose than from a murder, it's the murders that get media attention, while the black overdoses being much larger than the murders are simply never a topic on the media. A drunk overdose death and a homicide death are still an unnecessary death caused by crime. And it's difficult to understand how whites can be crucially critical of African Americans' homicide rate when the white overdose death rate is considerably higher than that of African Americans and killing much more whites than homicides are killing blacks, both by number and by rate. In 2021, the homicide rate for African American males in Gilchrist County, Florida was 539 out of 100,000. What that means is that if you were to live 70 years in that county as an African American male, your chances over your lifetime of becoming a victim of a homicide would be 37% which means that a mother who has three children would most definitely lose at least one of them 
to gun violence if they live their entire life in this county. However, the homicide rate in Gilchrist County was zero for whites. For African Americans living in Florida communities that are so marginalized, it's not a matter of if you're going to be a victim of a homicide, but when you're going to be a victim of a homicide. So if you're moving to Florida from a normal state that's not part of the Deep South, you need to understand that if you're African American, some of these places in Florida are outright set on killing you. For that reason, Gilchrist County is number one, the worst place for blacks in Florida. And I will mention that for Hispanics, it was number two. So here's a county that is disproportionately killing African Americans at an incredible rate. They're also killing Hispanics at an incredible rate, but the white population, absolutely zero. This has to be one of the most racist places, not only in Florida, but in the entire country. Whatever's happening in this rural county in North Central Florida, Hispanics, Blacks, and all minorities should be very careful because like I said, if an African American born in this county were to live their entire life here, they have a 37% chance of being murdered and that is completely unacceptable and unexplainable. There's no reason why an African American male living in this county should be 135 times more likely to be murdered than anybody else in the population. Those types of analytics don't happen naturally anywhere in the world. Those types of analytics happen on purpose. Similar types of analytics exist for the Hispanic population in this county. However, in other places of Florida, Latinos and Hispanics are less likely to be murdered than whites. So here's a situation where it's not about the particular marginalized group having a problem. It's about the community hurting them. And if you're African American, this is definitely one part of Florida you want to stay far away from. Number two is Putnam County. The largest city here is called Palatka. The homicide rate for African American males is 105 out of 100,000. An African American male in this county in Florida is 26 times more likely to be murdered than anybody else in the population. Surprisingly, Hispanics also had a very high murder rate in this particular county. And keep in mind that Hispanics murder rate is actually less than whites and less than the state average, which means that it's not happening by mistake. Hispanics and blacks in this county are completely marginalized. And some of the counties that were worse for Hispanics are also worse for blacks. Clearly, this isn't happening by mistake. These are places that marginalize minorities. Number three is Columbia County. This is the area surrounding Lake City, Florida. So if you're coming from Georgia, it's the first large city you encounter in Florida. Despite being technically in Florida, Lake City has more in common with Georgia, Alabama, and the Deep South than the rest of the state. And it really is a very sad place where racism is a huge problem for everybody in the community. African American males here have a homicide rate of 67 per 100,000, which is on par with the homicide rate of Detroit, Michigan. Nearby, Hamilton County also has the same problem. So anywhere around Lake City, Florida, African American males are about 17 times more likely to be the victim of a homicide compared to anybody else in the population. Number four is Brevard County, and this is going to be a shock to a lot of people because Melbourne, Florida is a large city, and you really wouldn't expect a city this big to have these types of problems, but their murder rate has consistently been between 27 to 29 back to back year after year for African Americans. And I actually went into the hood in Brevard County and talked to the people living there and they showed me exactly how the police is profiling their community needlessly. Now let me mention that in Brevard County, the drug overdose death rate is one of the highest in the entire state of Florida and the white population is the one that's dying the most at incredibly high rates. However, law enforcement is only concerned with over patrolling the African American community aggressively at that, even installing speed markers and speed trap cameras so that they can catch people 
breaking the law unnecessarily, despite the fact that Melbourne, Florida is one of the most discriminatory places for African Americans, they want to present themselves as this place that is the fastest growing in Florida and that people from all over the country should move here. I talked to a white lady in this community who was boyfriend and girlfriend of a black guy and she told me that everywhere they went in Melbourne, Florida, the law enforcement would pull them over, search them unwarrantedly, suspecting that they were doing a drug transaction. She told me that while they liked each other, they had to separate because the law enforcement was so unrelentlessly going after them every time they were seen in a car together, law enforcement just assumed it was a drug deal going down. So not only is Melbourne, Florida openly racist and the people have told me the problems they've dealt with in this community, but also if you look at the numbers, the analytics, you can see the African American males are being killed here at unproportionate levels. Law enforcement goes as far as setting up these speed traps in African American areas so they can easily pull over any vehicle in that area that they want to with a good reason they were speeding. However, they don't put these up in the white areas that people are dying from overdoses. They only want to set these up in the black communities. And again, the crime and the deaths from drugs are not generated in the black communities. It's the white communities that are suffering. But in Melbourne, Florida, and in Brevard County, they want to exorbitantly focus on the black communities. But not only are African Americans worthless in this community, so are homeless people. Law enforcement in Brevard County has absolutely no problem stripping away the rights of homeless people and charging them with crimes like trespassing, evicting them without getting warrants. Trespassing homeless people without the authorization of the landowners. We could go on forever about the violations of human rights that are happening against homeless people and black people and really anybody who's marginalized in Brevard County. And while it's no surprise that their murder rates are bad and their homeless rates are bad and their drug addiction rates are some of the highest in the entire state of Florida, when you're policing your communities like it's the 1970s, you're definitely going to have a lot of problems. We even ran into homeless people who needed medical attention and were afraid to call it because they thought the law enforcement would hurt them if they were forced to show up to a homeless camp. This is just a judgmental, miserable place. And it's surprising how a place with this many problems wants to portray themselves as the next place in Florida that's growing. We even had to buy people groceries while visiting Brevard County because their misery was so large, it broke my heart, and I had to help the people. So if you're thinking about Brevard County, Florida, if you're African American, or if you're just from any marginalized society, crap, even the white people, if they're homeless, aren't worth anything here, I would definitely advise you from staying the crap out of this miserable place. If they don't care about their own fellow white man who's homeless, eating out of the garbage, what do you think they're going to do to African Americans? This is a heartless, horrible place. And really, it's a shame that they would even try to portray it as a place that people should move to. Pay close attention to the graffiti on the wall we're about to pass. You can clearly see that even the homeless people here are racist. Even the homeless camps are segregated here. And well, this is what the reality of Brevard County is. Homeless camps, people eating out of the garbage, police profiling. If you want to be on the east coast of Florida, I would definitely recommend Port St. Lucie. It is a much better place. Number five is Madison County, Florida. Between Tallahassee and Lake City, this rural part of Florida has a homicide rate of 40 per 100,000 for the African-American community. And we've seen in the news articles and other people on social media explaining some of the nightmares they're dealing with in this rural Florida county that really sucks. I don't understand why you wanna move out here anyways, but if you do move here, your chances of being a victim of a homicide as an African-American are gonna be about 10 times higher than other people in the population, completely unacceptable. This part of Northern Florida is considered part of the deep south number six is hardy county the largest city being washula this county in 2019 had a homicide rate for african americans of 119 out of 100,000. 
This area has a huge Latino population, but it's still a very racist and hostile area. You'll notice that despite the city being 40% Hispanic, some of the restaurants are going to be 100% white when you walk in. It's hard to overlook how bad the analytics for African Americans are in this Florida county. In this region of South Central Florida, African American communities are heavily marginalized and somewhat segregated. Other adjacent counties also have a problem, like nearby highlands. The population in this part of Florida has struggled to grow. Despite the rising cost of real estate in Southwest Florida, these inland communities are not part of that growth. Hispanics here are having part in the lowest paying jobs and given absolutely no fair shot at making a decent earning. They're looked at as only being able to work in agriculture and other outdoor activities that don't pay so well. This area is poverty stricken. The population has struggled to grow. And it's one of those places where you know it's uncomfortable to be a minority. Economically stagnant and racist, I don't see why you'd want to move here anyways. Number seven is Duval County, which is the city of Jacksonville. And you're thinking, wait, hold on, Jose. Isn't Jacksonville one of the largest African-American communities in Florida? It is, but the homicide rate right here for African-Americans is usually between 34 to 40 per 100,000 for the black population. And at least 100 black people are killed in this city every single year. We all heard the recent situation on the news, but the day-to-day -day life in Jacksonville for the youth is gang violence and territory disputes that it's just about killing off the youth population. Most years, between 100 to 125 African Americans are losing their life on the city streets of Jacksonville, a vast majority of it related to gang violence. Drug overdose deaths for African Americans are also two times higher than the state average in Jacksonville, which means whether by drugs or by violence, the black community here is really struggling. And it's not a surprise, Jacksonville is considered more part of the deep south than the rest of Florida, so its analytics on murder, drug addiction, are just a reflection of the geographical area it's in. You may have heard people mention that drugs are coming in from the southern border. What I've noticed traveling across America is that it's actually the cities that have ports that have the biggest problems. Take the Tampa Bay area, Jacksonville, Baltimore, Philly, it's really the cities that have access to ports where drugs are out of control. On the other hand, Texas on the border has some of the lowest drug overdose death rates in the country. And we can see again how information and a misleading ideology is being put out there to make people believe that Hispanics or blacks or whoever the crap they want to go after is the enemy. But if you start to study real analytics on how the drug epidemic spread throughout the United States, you'll see that it started in port cities and moved inland with the exception of Appalachia, which already had a homegrown problem. There's actually a map on the internet you can look up on Google that's interactive that shows you how drug death spread over the years across America and you can see it shooting out from port cities. However, they want to make you believe that it's coming from the southern border. You can drive a car from England, which is an island, through a tunnel into Europe and all the way to South Africa. However, you can't drive a car between Panama and Colombia connecting North America. Global shipping companies do not want to connect the Americas. They want to keep the Americas sliced up so they can make larger profits. And spreading lies about the southern border just plays into their economic policy. But in the reality, Jacksonville, being a port city, has a huge drug problem. If it was true that these drugs were coming from the southern border, then we would have seen state like Texas have the highest drug overdose death rates, and it has the lowest. We would see the states in the southwest with the biggest problem, and we don't. It's the east coast and port cities. Number eight is Miami-Dade County. Homicide rates for African Americans has recently hit 30 per 100,000, and over the last few years, it's been slowly growing. Interestingly enough, many blacks fleeing Miami are moving to Jacksonville, thinking that they'll find a more welcoming African American city, despite the fact that the analytics there for blacks are worse than Miami-Dade. A Hispanic that dropped out of high school will make more money in Dade County 
than an African American with a college degree. So it's understandable that economical pressures between the Hispanic and black community in Dade County have led to a lot of blacks from Miami-Dade wanting to leave for better places. However, what they don't know is that the situations they're encountering and the places they're moving to are actually much more dangerous than what they had in Miami. And despite blacks from Miami struggling, blacks from other parts of the country are moving into Hispanic areas of Miami-Dade and they say that they love it. Over the years, I have personally seen three dead bodies on the streets of Miami through homicides, just driving through the city and stumbling across a dead person. One time, it was an African American who ran into a store to do a robbery, and the store owner killed them in retaliation for trying to rob them. Of course, that type of situation is not considered a homicide. It is a self-defense situation. Every year, about 150 black people are killed by homicide in Miami-Dade County. Gentrification and the lack of opportunity for those people, even if they have a good education, means that many black people are starting to leave Miami because simply they're not able to afford living there. When that happens to people, they feel a lot of resentment. They feel like they belong to a community, but the community doesn't want to accept them. The Hispanic areas of Miami, which account for about 90% of the county, are some of the safest places in the United States. Most of the crime and violence and murders are happening specifically in the African American communities and those three murders that I talked to you about or three bodies that I've seen in Miami were all in Northwest Miami, predominantly a black community. Many of the blacks in Miami are Bahamian, Haitian, or Jamaican, and a lot of them are moving over into Broward County where they've been able to set up a better community, but there are still some racial tensions between whites and Hispanics. I've actually met a lot of Miami-Dade African Americans who have moved out of Northwest and into the Southwest. A good example would be Trick Daddy. He's from Northwest Miami, but he moved into Southwest Miami. So long time Dade County African Americans who've been around Hispanic people are more likely to wanna stay. And in fact, they're moving into Hispanic areas and away from their own communities for their own safety. I've talked to a lot of blacks in Southwest Miami that are from Northwest Miami and they tell me that between them and the Hispanic community is nothing but love. So you have to understand that your personal perspective on things can make a difference with some Miami-Dade blacks moving into Hispanic areas because they like it and others leaving to other cities because they feel like it's a prejudice against them. So it all comes down to your personal perspective. It's a really confusing situation and I really don't even know the best way to explain it. I can say for me as a Hispanic, Miami would be a very welcoming place. But if I was a Southern black with a Southern mentality, I really wouldn't like Miami. But a lot of the African Americans that are from there absolutely love it and they feel like they're part of the Latino community themselves even though they're black. I really can't explain this any better. It's quite a confusing situation. But if you're African American and you're moving to Miami, you should definitely understand that while it's not racial tensions like there are in the Deep South, it's a different type of situation. It's more about sectors of the economy than it is racism that's been handed down from generation to generation where many affluent blacks move to Miami and they absolutely love it and don't find any problems but blacks that are from Miami have been struggling economically in Miami for them it's a different story the same thing happens to poor whites in Florida who are watching rich whites from other states have a great time while they're living in misery in Florida. So it's a little bit different than in other states, but there is some type of situation in Miami that you should definitely watch out for if you're African American. If you move into Broward County, it's just outside of Miami, those areas have much more favorable analytics for African Americans. In fact, some places like Palm Beach, Broward, and even pushing into Port St. Lucie have some of the best analytics for African Americans in the entire country. So there's a good place for everybody in Southeast Florida. You just have to make sure that you fall within the right community. Number nine is Henry County. In 2020, four African Americans were killed here, bringing the total to 
80 out of 100,000 in previous years. We've seen that be 40 out of 100,000. So we can see that there's a problem within the African-American communities of Henry County. While Henry County is growing in a lot of areas and there's a lot of poverty as well as growth in this county, the communities of African-Americans here are very poor places. So despite the fact it's a growing place of good analytics for safety, it's one of the safest counties in Florida, when it comes to the actual African American community, there are definitely some issues in Henry County. But again, with South Florida, you have to understand it's not Alabama, it's not a social racism, it is an institutional economical racism that marginalizes African Americans in South Florida. It's very different from North Florida. So you're seeing a lot of South Florida counties make this list and you just have to understand that it's not exactly Mississippi or Alabama down here. In fact, for Henry County, you have some of the best analytics for Hispanics. You don't have that in North Florida counties. Take this little hangout spot that we met in the African American community. You had whites and Hispanics hanging out in an African American community. I can assure you that would never happen in Mississippi or Alabama but it's the way we are in South Florida. So you have to understand that yes, the African American community has its struggles, but that doesn't mean that socially they're segregated like in other states. LaBelle is the largest community in Henry County and the outskirts of LaBelle are growing incredibly, but within the old core of the city, there's definitely a lot of problems and a lot of poverty. This region of South Florida, predominantly Hispanics dominate and the analytics are good for Hispanics, but they're a little different for African Americans. Henry County isn't a stalled out place like the counties we mentioned in North Florida. There's a lot of new home construction, home price and land appreciation. Number 10 is DeSoto County. The largest city here is Arcadia. Again, we're still in Southwest Florida. The city of Arcadia is segregated. There are very few African American businesses and those that I talked to were telling me that the county was racist and gave them all types of unnecessary troubles when they try to start businesses. Many African Americans here have just quit on the idea of being self-employed or starting a business because they know that the county seems to not let them get ahead with unnecessary inspections. This is what you call institutionalized racism where the system is rigged up to make sure that you fail. Arcadia, the biggest city in DeSoto County is segregated and the African American part of the city is the absolute poorest and most rundown part of the city which goes to show how racist this area is, that they haven't allowed their African-American community to have the same opportunities as everybody else. Many of the homicides that have taken place in Arcadia were actually people from other places like Fort Myers, but because they happen in DeSoto County, it's gonna put this city and this county on our list. High murder rates and local government making sure that minority businesses struggle there's no reason to believe that this is one of the worst places to live in Florida if you're an African American. This place is really set on ensuring that minorities like blacks and Hispanics cannot get ahead and they're holding down their own city and their own communities. Despite African Americans being a good portion of the city, they're a very small portion of the economy and the businesses on main streets. There's definitely a problem in DeSoto County. Analytics here simply do not look good and do not reflect a place you should move to. So if you're African American and considering moving to Florida, stay away from those small little towns inland and come join us along the coast where we have beaches, better jobs, and better opportunities for you. And keep in mind that my opinion is subjective in the layout of this video. We looked at the communities that had the worst murder rates in Florida and those are the ones that made our list. I personally don't like to see counties in Southwest Florida where I'm from ending up on a list like this, but the numbers don't lie. The analytics are the truth. The only thing I can do is put these situations on blast to see if we can shame a few people and perhaps they'll change their mindset, which leads to these situations because this is all about perspective in my belief. If we just change the way we look at other people, we can change their outcomes. I truly believe that in the vast majority of the communities that we've looked at today, the problem isn't that these African American people and their communities are bad, it's that they're marginalized and thus 
through the lack of opportunities, people end up in these horrible situations. And as always, if you think there's a place in Florida that should have made our list, I would love to hear your opinion. Our metric was solely homicide rates, and I think that's a great place to start because that's possibly the worst thing happening in these communities. And why not use real numbers to give you guys a comprehensive list? For every one African American that's a victim of a homicide, there are eight whites who die from a drug overdose. Of course, in today's society, only certain topics get attention, while other topics are completely ignored. If you ask me, as a neutral party in this issue, being a Hispanic, I would say that those 6,000 white deaths from drug overdoses are a much more newsworthy article than 800 black deaths. And of course, none of these situations should be happening, and everybody deserves an opportunity to live and enjoy their life. But unfortunately for some people, the situations they're put in lead them down a bad path. I was born into poverty, and today I live in a suburban nice area. It took a lot of work, effort, and dedication to change the disposition that life gave me. But I've noticed that in the community where I live now, which is predominantly wealthy whites, at 5.30 in the morning, they're in a parking lot doing exercises before they go to work. So if the people that live in nice suburban communities, in order to keep their affluence and wealth and position, have to wake up at 5.30 in the morning to go work, be stuck in long commutes that are about an hour long, if they have to go through all that to keep their nice suburban life, what makes us, coming from a poor background, think that we have time to hang out in the hood with our friends? If the rich people who live in the suburbs have to be up at 5.30 five or six times a week and be stuck in a commute that's an hour long, two times a day to keep their lifestyle, what makes us, coming from poverty, think that us, without putting in effort, are going to get out of the trap that we've been placed in? If life is difficult and demanding for the rich people, how much more effort should we, the poor, be putting into resolving our situations? Life and cost of living is difficult even for people who don't have to deal with prejudice and marginalization. So how much harder is it for us who are discriminated to accomplish the same thing? You have to put in more effort. Some of the best safety analytics, income, and real estate values in Florida are the Hispanic communities in South Florida who dealt with a lot of racism and discrimination. But that racism, that discrimination, it just makes you be prepared to persevere, to be stronger, to be better, because you've been through so much that it's made you stronger. And in the future, that can actually make you very powerful because you can garnish all that energy to make a determination to be successful, not to give up and let them win and have the outcome that they want for you, which is for you to live in poverty, for you to be marginalized. When you have money in your pocket, it's a lot harder for people to thread all over you. So if you're African American, Hispanic, or any other minority or situation that's marginalizing you, whether you're a white homeless person, whatever you're dealing with that makes you be marginalized in society, the only tool that you have is the motivation through perseverance to make sure that whatever outcome life has given you, you can change it. And that will only make you stronger, more resilient, and more capable of overcoming the challenges that face everyone in society. That's why many Hispanic and Asian communities that are thriving are thriving because despite the fact they've had to move from one place to the next and start over many times because of racism and hate, every single time you restart, you're better off, you're smarter. It doesn't matter how many times they flip the script on you. Every single time they do it, you're going to come back stronger and better than ever because you have determination, perseverance, and you're focused on the outcome of what your life is going to be. But if you just sit back and absorb the system and let it suck you in, you're going to be trapped in that. And your children are going to be the victims of crime. You have to fight back. You have to persevere and make sure that the outcome that they want you to end up in isn't the one you end up in. Doesn't matter how many times you have to start from zero due to racism, discrimination, and people taking away what's rightfully yours. You're gonna keep being successful. You're gonna keep persevering. And every time you build back, you're gonna build back stronger and better because you are resilient. The racism and discrimination that we have faced in the United States has made us really tough people. 
But use that resilience for your success, not for the destruction of your own communities. It's a lot harder to show up at 9 o'clock in the morning and be there till 7 o'clock at night. That guy's a tough guy. It's not the guy on a street corner hanging out that's tough. You know who's tough? The guy that woke up at 5.30 in the morning. That guy's a real soldier. That guy's a real gangster. That guy's a real thug because he went out there and he faced the world for real. You're a lot tougher of a dude when you wake up in the morning and you take care of your responsibilities. You might think you're tough hanging out on the street corner with the homies, but that's not the real tough guy. The real tough guy is the one that went out there and got it for his family. The real gangster is the one that woke up in the morning and dealt with all the crap you have to deal with every single day to make a living for your family. That's today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed not only the information, but also the message of resilience. Thank you so much for being part of our channel. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I am checking out for today.